which is the brightest star in the constellation Orion? We'll answer that and much more in this video as we draw upon Orion to learn more about the night sky. And if you enjoy my artwork, remember you can pick up my Zodiac Constellation stickers on Etsy, link in the description below. To start off, I like to read a little bit about the mythology for each constellation that I draw to get a good idea of how I want to depict him. Then I find a whole bunch of references to create a bit of a mood board. And you can see here, these are some of my favorite depictions that I found. There are various different ways he's depicted. Sometimes he has a club, sometimes he has a sword, a shield, and sometimes he has a animal hide that he is holding. I chose the club because that's pretty common in the mythology and the stories about him, and then the shield because I just thought the stars on that side of him looked more like a shield than anything else. Then I started to block out some shapes to try to define the body of Orion and to get his limbs in the right spot and everything like that. The human anatomy can be a little bit tricky, so it took a few tries. I decided with his feet to keep him kneeling, um, mostly to keep him as close as possible to the star pattern, and also because I wanted his left foot to be by the star Rigel because it means foot. So that was some of my main choices for how I drew this guy. Of course, I made a point to give him a belt, because we all know the Orion's belt is, is, uh, is a big deal here. It's a big part of this constellation. Luckily, it's digital art, so I can re resize some things as needed, try to get the proportions to look right once I was happy with it. Then I moved on to the line work. Before I show you that, let's talk about where and when to find Orion, some mythology about it, and celestial objects to look for in this constellation. Orion can easily be seen just after sunset between December and March. It culminates, or reaches its highest point, around 9 p.m. at the beginning of February, then begins to slowly descend into the western horizon going into March. Orion is located on the celestial equator, so imagine the equator on the Earth and then extend it out into space. Because of this, in the northern hemisphere, you'll see Orion looking southward above the horizon. Near the equator, he'll pass directly overhead, and in the southern hemisphere, he'll cross the northern sky. To find Orion, just look in the proper direction after the sun sets in January or February. So for me, I look south or southeast, depending on the time of day. That's about all it takes, since Orion is an easily recognizable hourglass shape, and most of its stars are very bright. As you get more familiar with the night sky, you can spot his neighbors as he lies between Gemini, Canis Major, his hunting dog, and Taurus, his worthy foe. In Babylonian times, his name referred to the Heavenly Shepherd. In Greek tradition, Orion was the son of Poseidon, god of the sea, and Uriel, a gorgon. He was said to be a giant with superhuman strength and was an excellent hunter. According to one story, he claimed he could kill every animal on earth, but met his match and death by Scorpio the scorpion. He was then revived by Ophiuchus and placed in the stars opposite his mortal enemy, Scorpio. Orion rises in the winter and Scorpio in the summer. Many of the stars in Orion are hot blue supergiants. However, his most populous star, Betelgeuse, or Betelgeuse, is a red giant star and one of the largest stars known. Betelgeuse, or Alpha Orionis, is the second brightest star in Orion and is designated Alpha Orionis. It is located at Orion's right shoulder, although the name is Arabic for the hand of Orion. Betelgeuse is near the end of its life and will eventually produce a supernova explosion that may be seen from Earth. We may not be around to see it, however, because this can occur sometime within the next millennia or 100,000 years. So that's a long time for us, but not so long for a star's lifespan. Betelgeuse is about 624 light years away, and its brightness fluctuates, but it's between 0 and 1 in apparent magnitude. Rigel, or Beta Orionis, is the brightest star in Orion with an apparent magnitude of about 0.18 and it is about 772 light years away. Rigel marks Orion's left foot. The Orion Nebula is the middle star in the sword, which you'll find just below Orion's belt. It can be seen with the naked eye, although you'll need excellent conditions to recognize it as anything other than a star. 
you can see some of the nebulous matter as a smudge of light, and it makes a great target through binoculars or a telescope. The Orion Nebula is about 1,344 light years away. Right next to the Orion Nebula is Messier 43, also called Deimerin's Nebula. Next, we have the Horsehead Nebula, which is just south of Alnitak, the easternmost star of Orion's belt. This nebula is about 1,375 light years from Earth. Finally, Messier 78 is a reflection nebula about 1,350 light years away and is located between Alnitak and Betelgeuse. That's all for now. Next time you go outside, look for this giant hunter and his nearby hunting dog, Canis Major. Check out the Orion Nebula, especially if you have a telescope. And then if you have time, sit and wait for Betelgeuse to explode. <laughs> remember, that's the orange star marking Orion's shoulder. Look up, keep learning, and remember to smile. <laughs>